Hey everyone, so today we're going to be doing chapter 12, vector calculus, more specifically 12b, question 13, which is going to be on when you have two particles colliding with one another. I'm also going to throw in an intersection question because in the exam and even in your SAC, you often see collision and intersection together in one question. So without further ado, let's have a go. Question 13, two particles a and b have position vectors ra and rb, respectively at time t. So basically you have vector functions ra in terms of t, so i and j, you got rb in terms of t as well. And t obviously has to be bigger than zero, so make sure you note that domain down, your answer cannot be negative. And then afterwards they say, find where and when the particles collide. So when and where particles collide. What particles? These two particles. How do two particles collide with one another? That's basically when your i components for both particles and your j components for both particles equals one another. Because when two particles collide with one another, they have to be at the same position. So this is very important. Same position. Same position at the same time. So same time. When your particles are at the same position at the same time, they collide. Later on when we go through intersection, it will be when the particle is at the same position, but not necessarily the same time. For now, we're going to go through collision first. So how do we do that? Like I mentioned, the I components has to be the same, and the J components have to be the same. So we equate them to one another. So 6t squared over here, 6t squared equals to 13t minus 6. So the I component of vector function for particle b. 6t squared equals 13t minus 6. You can chuck that inside your calculator. You should get t equals 2 over 3 or t equals 3 over 2. Most of these questions are usually um, calculator based, but sometimes you might get them text free as well, so you just have to do it by hand. Right. The second part, obviously, we need to make the j component equal each other as well. So 2t cubed minus 18t, right here, 2t cubed minus 18t. You make that equal to the j component of particle b, which in this case is 13t minus 6. You let them equal each other. On your calculator, you should get t equals 3 over 2, t equals 3, or t equals negative 3. Afterwards, guys, you have multiple time values. Which one do you pick? Do you pick all of them? No, not necessarily. Because if you pick 2 over 3 over here, and you substitute 2 over 3, so when time is 2 over 3 seconds, into both particles, they will have the same i position. So when time equals 2 over 3, they will have the same i position. But when you sub it back into the j components, they have different j position. Same i, but different j. 3 over 2, same i. When you sub in 3 over 2 here as well, you get the same j. So what you pick actually is 3 over 2. That's the time value that you pick so that the particles collide. And when t equals 3 or t equals negative 3, they don't collide because that's when the j components are the same, but the i components are not the same. And that's it. If you want to find when the particles collide, it will be when t equals 3 over 2 seconds t equals 3 over 2 seconds. Very simple guys, just make the i and j component equal each other and find the time value that are the same for both equations. Okay, moving on, we want to find where the particles collide. This is very simple, you sub in 3 over 2 back into one of the uh, vector functions. You can sub in back into a, you can sub into b, your choice. Pick whichever one uh, you prefer. r b t equals to 13, you sub 3 over 2 back into here. 3 over 2 minus 6i plus 3, 3 over 2 square minus 27j. And you should get 27 on 2i minus 81 divided by 4j. So basically the particle collides each other over here. We have a look over here at 27 on 2i minus 81 on 4j. If you put this in an axis, it will be somewhere here. So imagine this is your plane, that's your y-axis or your vertical, your j components actually. So your j vector, your i vector. 27 on 2 to the right, but then 81 on 4 all the way down. So that's where they collide. And it happens after 3 over 2 seconds. And that's it. That's how you do your collision questions. Now for intersection, guys, so I'm just going to add a little additional question here. So 
find when they intersect. Basically, for intersection, how you do this is you want the positions of your two particles, so A and B, A and B, to be the same, so same position, so it's still the same point, same position, but the time doesn't necessarily have to be the same. So same position or same point, but time doesn't necessarily necessarily have to be the same. It can be the same, but it doesn't have to be the same. So how do you do this? Your particle A can go really fast. So it can maybe start here, go really fast, you know, really fast, maybe ends up uh, moving all the way here in 10 seconds. Whereas particle B takes its time. It's gonna go over here, it's gonna move down, move down, but it's gonna take maybe 10 hours and then eventually it'll come back over here, it'll come down. So yes, this particle B, obviously it's gonna take 10 hours, it's gonna take a long time. So move really slow, but it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, it's gonna intersect the path of A. It's not gonna collide because A would have already been done by this point, it would have been here already. B would have still been moving, but the path of the movement would intersect. So that's an intersection question. So basically, same position, but not necessarily the same time. It can be the same time, that just means they collide as well. So a collision is an intersection, but an intersection is not necessarily a collision. So how do we do this, guys? Essentially, what you do is you let your I components and your J component still be the same because you want the same position, right? So it's 6T squared equals 13T minus 6, 2T cubed, 2T cubed minus 18T equals 3T squared minus 27, but you don't want the time to always be the same. So what do you do here? You replace one of the particles time, so either one, I'll choose B for this in this case, with a different variable. So replace T with S or something. So another time variable, because when you're doing collision, you made T equals to T, which was the same time. But when you're doing intersection, you don't want the time to always be the same. So this T over here doesn't have to be the same as that T. That's why you replace this T with an S, another variable, it doesn't have to be S, it can be any other variable, as long as not T again. So to do this question, you let 6T squared equals to 13S minus 6, not 13T minus 6, that's doing collision. When you're doing intersection, it's 13S minus 6. So I'll just do that down here. 6T squared equals to 13S minus 6. That's one equation. And then you can also have another equation because over here you have two variables, right? But only one equation. How do you solve for that? You can't. You need another equation. And this is where the J component comes in. You let 2t cubed minus 18t equals to 3t squared minus 27. So in that case, you get the other equation. So 2t cubed minus 18t, 2t cubed minus 18t equals to 3s squared minus 27 and now you have two equations with two variables you can definitely solve it on your CAS so just chuck it inside your CAS simultaneous equation that and you should get I'll quickly do it on my CAS in decimals t equals negative 2.6 so the first answer is actually two answers or s equals to 3.59 and your second answer was t equals 3 over 2 or s equals 3 over 2 and you realize that this time the second time here t equals 3 over 2 s equals 3 over 2 those are the same time so that's actually a collision like i said before so uh, this is a great thing to memorize all collision are intersection so basically any collision is an intersection because they do cross the same path but not all intersections are collisions because they don't have to be at the same time. They just have to cross the same path. In this case, we actually have two different values. Um, just imagine that you can actually take a negative for now. So in this first scenario, when t equals negative 2.6, so negative 2.6 seconds, your particle would cross at some path. You sub that back in into your a into your a vector function a and vector function b, you'll get the same numbers. You'll get the same i component, you also get the same j component, but your time is just different. 
and that's still an intersection because same position. Whereas in, if you sub in 3 over 2, you also get the same position, same time as we've seen here because it's a collision. But because they're the same time, it will be a collision. Of course, we also have to think logically, time cannot be negative, so that's, this is really bad. Negative 2.6, your answer, if you were to answer an intersection question, so when do they intersect? Basically, t equals 3 over 2, and s equals 3 over 2. In a collision question, you have only one answer over here, so t equals 3 over 2, that's it, there's no s. Whereas in intersection, you have to specify that yes, Particle A time is 3 over 2 seconds and particle B is 3 over 2 seconds or sometimes you might get different numbers so time could be 3 over 2 and time for particle B could be 5 seconds so you have to make sure you specify that but that's it for intersection so just remember all collisions are intersection but not all intersections are collision and that's it thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next week